JJ, thanks for stopping by Forbes today. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure, uh, Steve. You know, great place to start. You're an options guy. Uh, Apple is a stock. It's an expensive stock. It's not cheap to buy a share of Apple. Not on valuation, but on how much the stock just right. costs. And we've talked in the past about how options can be a good way to get exposure to some of these expensive names, whether we're talking about Apple, Priceline, the Chipotle's of the world that mm -hmm. cost several hundred dollars a share. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, there are two main ways. And we'll talk from the long side, if that's okay, because sure. most people, I think, when they go in, are, <laughs> it seems lately, particularly, it's paid to do so. First of all, you want to look at it, I think, from a spread point of view, rather than just buying a call outright, because the problem with that is you pay a premium for time and options decay. You know, like death and taxes, the, uh, we know premium is going to happen. So one of the things people could look to do is to buy a call spread where they buy a call that's in the money, so perhaps buying some value, sell a call that's out of the money against it. So if Apple were trading at 575, you know, you might want to buy a 565, a 560, something again that has some intrinsic value, sell something 580, 585 against it that you are selling a uh, premium help pay for the cost of it. Conversely, you could also sell a put spread. Now this one for some people who aren't as, uh, shall we say, nimble in options, might be a little bit more difficult sure. to picture, but you're selling a put closer to the money and then buying one further away from the money. The main focus in both of these strategies is defining your risk. Particularly for the retail trader, defining your risk is so important. When you know worst case scenario going in, helps everything else become a lot easier. Right. And talking about risk, huge part of earnings season is you know, risk of volatility, risk of a big miss, risk of a big beat. We've seen right. Apple, yeah. we've seen a bunch of companies do this. Talk a little bit about how an investor can you know, play earnings in the sense that you know, if you're heading into an earnings report, which can be a high stress time for a stock for the market sure. as a whole, you know, what can you do there? Well, one of the things that you have to be a little bit careful about when you're playing uh, options, particularly in the earnings, is that often the volatility is higher. So what that really means is you're paying more for those options. Often we see where you go in, you pay up for these, the numbers come out as expected, volatility gets smacked, and even though we may move in the correct direction for you, the volatility contracts so you don't necessarily make a lot of money or in some cases maybe even lose money, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, again, going back to a spread, if you are going to play a direction, I would encourage people to think about spreads, you know, buying one, selling another, so you're getting some of that volatility back. Uh, one of the other things that people should probably look at is weekly options because you're playing for an event. Don't pay for three weeks out in time. Pay, play for what you actually want. The reason that it's good for retail traders, it helps them keep their discipline. So often, they'll play for earnings. The event doesn't come out as they want it, and they'll say, ah, I may as well keep it on. And they'll take two more weeks of losses mm -hmm. on the premium. So weekly options are a nice way to force you to be disciplined. And, as that, an and that ties into what we've spoken about regarding sort of averaging your way into volatility. And with the VIX being so low as it was, and it obviously shot up a little bit here. Yes. But you know, when you're at these levels where volatility is very low, you can sort of get lulled to sleep, and sure. that might be a good time to, you know, take some take some volatility there. And and you know, one of the things that we even see with our customers, which is nice, is people will. I'll go to something very basic, a covered call, buying a stock, selling a call against it, a stock, you know, selling a call maybe out of the money. So often I'll hear uh, customers say, "Well, I can't do it when volatility is low." And so what makes a lot of sense? People always talk about dollar cost averaging. Volatility cost averaging would be maybe you sell the same call two or three months out in time. So at the end of the, so right now as we're talking, we're coming up in May expiration. So maybe you sell them some in May, some in June, some in July. When May expires, you can sell that out in August. You're gonna get the average volatility on that stock for the entire year, rather than trying to pick highs and lows in volatility, which as we both know can be very difficult because when volatility moves down, it tends to move down slowly, but when it jumps, it jumps very quickly right. and you don't wanna get caught in that trap. And they say retail investors are great at picking bottom and tops just the opposite right? yeah although I would say that, that that has been the myth I think that the retail trader uh, is certainly improved significantly over the last 10 years the education levels improved significantly I look at how our traders trade now you know it's funny we talked about Apple earlier it's always the, the, the stock and options that people like to trade they're so familiar with it but the complexity of what people are trading has really picked up significantly over the last few years all right JJ thanks for stopping by we appreciate it always great to be here thanks right. Steve thank you